you think the seafloor is all mapped. And, and the fact is it's not. We've not even mapped 25% of the world seafloor to a, a modern standard, meaning multi-beam sonar and GPS uh, navigation. 75% of the uh, Earth's seafloor is basically uncharted territory. And it's even crazier for the volume of the ocean. Barely 5% of the ocean volume has ever been explored with a remotely operated vehicle. 5%? 5%, yeah. So like that much volume, we don't even know what's out there. I joined the Navy uh, because I wanted to be an oceanographer. I, it wasn't because I wanted to join the Navy. My, my dad had been in and I, I respected the service, of course, but uh, my passion is in the ocean. And that's really why we're here because we'll get into the UAP and the ocean later. But uh, I grew up in Southern California. I love to swim and surf. And, uh, and so I wanted to study the ocean. And so the Naval Academy had a great major and they had a scholarship to this institution called Scripps Institution of Oceanography. And I wanted to go there and get it. I got that, and I, then I started doing that work in the Navy. And what it involves is basically uh, knowing everything about the physical ocean and predicting it. Waves, currents, how uh, the ocean structure affects acoustic propagation, which is the top consideration in undersea warfare and, and finding and killing enemy submarines and, and vice versa, not being killed by an enemy submarine. So uh, that, that's what oceanographers do for the most part. I work with your community, Navy, Navy Special Warfare, uh, for a time because uh, a lot of work with the steel delivered vehicles, for example, or anything like a special reconnaissance mission from offshore. That The ton of work they do is dependent upon the ocean, wave heights, currents, temperature. All my SDV buddies would hype out on every mission. and. <laughs> <laughs> I would never want to do that. My my wife was a Navy diver, you know, and it's funny because when I was at the Navy SEAL headquarters, I had a good buddy who was a, who had formerly been in the SDV teams, and he, he knew my wife, and they had these mutual conversations together whenever we got uh, had parties or whatnot because my wife had been a Navy diver, and Bruce had been a SDV operator, and they would always just talk about hating to be cold now <laughs> after all those missions. <laughs> but anyways, um, yeah, so just, just helping... Operators in any field, uh, whether it be the surface Navy, submarine, SEALs, know the ocean and predict it so they can plan their missions more effectively. Then you went on, you had you were a flag officer at the Pentagon. Yeah. What were you doing there? Well, I, I was the oceanographer of the Navy. That's the top oceanographer and meteorologist and hydrographer, advising the chief of naval operations on everything uh, that my community of officers did for the Navy. So I was in charge of six of our oceanographic ships uh, that are all around the world doing co collecting ocean data and um, mapping the seafloor. So this is an interesting thing. You, you see these pictures of the earth and sometimes you'll see like Google Earth's o ocean uh, features and you think the seafloor is all mapped. And, and the fact is it's not. We've not even mapped 25% of the world seafloor to a, a modern standard, meaning multi-beam sonar and GPS uh, navigation. Uh, that's 75% of the uh, Earth's seafloor is basically uncharted territory. And, and it's even crazier for the volume of the ocean. Barely 5% of the ocean volume has ever been explored with a remotely operated vehicle. 5%? 5%, yeah. So like that much volume, we don't even know what's out there. So... Uh, so I did that for the Navy in the Pentagon, and as I, after I left, I, I did that at this U.S. agency, which was a U.S. top ocean agency, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. And then, you know, I, I, since I've left, I'm just consulting for some companies that do that kind of work, ocean tech, weather tech, um, some other things, yeah. So there's another thing about this underwater feature off SoCal that I want to dive an ROV on. Uh, so... Uh, what happened is uh, I wanted to get a better look at it, and uh, I happen to know this very famous explorer. His name is Victor Vescovo, and here's the kind of guy Victor is. He's a private equity investor. He was an intelligence officer in the Naval Reserve, and uh, but he made a lot of money uh, on his uh, in his day job, and he has done the Explorers Club Grand Slam, which involves hiking all the seven peaks, including Everest, and skiing to the North Pole and the South Pole. And Victor, for him, it wasn't enough. So he decided, he learned that all the deep ocean trenches in the world, not all of them have been explored. So he hired a company, bought a ship, built his own submersible, and financed uh, for the sum of about $50 million, 
an expedition to dive in all the five deep trenches. And it's wow. called the five deeps. None of them, have, that's never happened. So we built a submersible that could go all the way down to the Marianas Trench, the deepest part of the ocean. They call it Challenger Deep. And he, he's done that 14 times, which is incredible. He, he, that had only been d- dove twice before. How deep is it? 35,000 feet. Wow. 10,000 plus meters. Yeah, this is crazy. And uh, and so he, he's done some exploring. What happened is uh, I signed an agreement with him when I was at NOAA, uh, and he, he agreed to put our scientists on his ship and give us the data he collected, because he also had a really great sonar, a multi-beam bathymetry, bathymetry sonar. And so we had that agreement. Well, um, one time after I left the government, I learned that he was going to do a test uh, cruise, if you will, a shakedown for a, his ship because it got a new sonar on it, the, the state of the art. And uh, I, when I learned he was doing it and I, and I knew about this one feature that I couldn't explain in the, on the seafloor, I wrote Victor and I said, hey, um, this, this cruise you're going to go test your sonar at, um, I have an idea for you and it's going to be an expedition like no other. And I told him about what I was doing with UAP and my, you know, my hypothesis on this feature maybe being the result of some interaction with the USO and the seabed. And uh, um, I said, and I have some other coordinates too. And we gave him some coordinates of areas like where we knew the Nimitz had its encounter and uh, the Omaha had its encounter. Just areas where UAP had been observed and, and USOs and that maybe there's something on the seabed there. And I, I didn't think he'd write me back. I, I, I was curious. He, I thought he might think I'm... I was off my rocker. Well, he wrote me back and just said, send me the coordinates. And he went and surveyed all around those areas. Unfortunately, his submersible wasn't ready and he couldn't get his eyes on that tar- that target and-, and see it optically. But he got some high resolution bathymetry with the sonar and-, and that's what I'm working off of. Well, what did, what? Ha- how long ago did this happen? Oh, it might've been two years, but, but uh, um, and that- that's what's interesting about, my point too is this, uh, that uh, here is a guy like him, and I told him about possible UAP activity in the ocean, and he didn't blink. He just said, send me the coordinates. I have one other story, and it relates to this, the ocean, and I guess maybe the credibility of the topic. So I, I, uh, I mentioned that uh, I work with the National Academies, and uh, National Academies of Science, Engineering, and Medicine. And they have this, this body on it called the Ocean Studies Board. And this is the, the Hall of Fame or the all-stars of ocean science in our nation. These are just top-tier ocean scientists who get together and we decide upon topics of interest for, on the ocean and we agree on studies and help conduct them. And uh, we, you know things like the illegal fishing issue I talked about, ocean plastics, you name it. Well, I went to them and I, I pulled together all my info about what Congress had done, the DOD is doing, uh, and NASA has a study team, and I recommended that we get together and do a survey of all the government data sets, that, uh, ocean data sets, and just look for anomalous activity and see if there are areas where we know it occurs and they just haven't been looked at because, remember, I mentioned it's not necessarily the, the topic or target of most ocean research expeditions. So maybe it's in the data and no one even thought about calling it out. Well, they... they I. I wasn't sure what they'd say, but and they did not laugh me out of the room. They actually said, wow, that's interesting, Tim. Maybe you should look into it, but you probably want to include all the classified data sources too, and, and we don't do that. The group that does that at the academies is the Naval Studies Board. No matter where you're watching Sean Ryan show from, if you get anything out of this, please like, comment, subscribe, and most importantly, share this everywhere you possibly can. And... If you're feeling extra generous, please leave us a review on Apple and Spotify podcasts.